I keep waiting for the perfect moment to record my next podcast episode, but you know what? Right now is the perfect moment because we got 10 more, 11 more hours in this car and I've got nothing but thoughts and time on my mind. So let's freaking begin. I feel like I'm probably gonna get like four or five episodes out of this just long rant of what I'm doing. This is Rainbows and Unicorns, the show where we talk about the real life because life ain't all rainbows and unicorns. People aren't going to bend to what you want and they're not going to conform to what you think is right and what you think is right might not be right. Um, life's not always going to go your way and I think that we get so caught up in thinking that life should be the way that we want it to be. And so today I want to talk about words. Sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me. I wish I understood this sooner. So my entire life growing up was very pale. I am very pale. I'm very white. I am a very pale white woman. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> and when I was in the eighth grade, I started getting bullied for the color of my skin, basically because of how white I am. Uh, so I got called chalky, toothpaste, Casper, whiteboard, you name it. I've probably been called it. And I begged my mom, I'm like 13 years old, I'm like, mom, please let me tan, please. I need to tan, I have to tan. Like I am too pale, please let me tan. So my mom let me go to the tanning bed. At 13 years old, I started tanning. Because I let what other people had to say about the color of my skin determine my value, my worth, and the confidence that I held in my own self. And rather than letting me tan, I wish my mom would have solidified the fact that what other people have to say and think about me didn't matter. But she also, I love my mom to death. I want to preface with that. But she, you know, we don't know what we don't know. And she does not believe that herself. So how is she going to pass that on to her kids, right? That's going to lead me to another, another thing. But I want to hit on this first. So then last night I'm having a conversation and... I was with a mom of a disabled child, right? And she's just being real, real raw and honest. And it was, sometimes I struggle when other people say things like, thank God my baby's healthy. Thank God my baby's healthy. Like God's punishing unhealthy babies. And while I totally understand where she's coming from, man, like, thank God I got out of that accident, okay, right? Thank God. I'm not paralyzed. I've heard someone said that to me. Thank God that when I broke my back, this didn't happen to me. And I was like, oh shit. Like, yeah, thank God. But like, you think God punished me? No. Side note, this is my purpose. This is where I'm supposed to be. God did not punish me. God did not say, oh, I'm going to make you a wheelchair user because you deserve to be punished for what a shitty human you are. Because I was a shitty human. That's not why I'm paralyzed. I'm paralyzed because there's a bigger mission and purpose that I have to serve, and this is my opportunity to do that. I'm gonna have to get off here and start writing my book. Jeez, oh my gosh, I'm gonna use voice text about my books. I just thought of something. Wow. Um, anyways, look, I, I, I just completely sidetracked, straight up. So we're having this conversation and she's like, this person just had a baby and they're like, thank God my baby's healthy. What, what, does that mean God's punishing my baby because my baby is not healthy? When, yes, he may have a disability, but he's still a healthy baby. Is it the ideal world that you wanted? No. But this baby, this child, this disabled child of hers is literally changing so many lives by just being alive and impacting so many people and bringing so much perspective and awareness and, and just compassion to people's hearts. So while this child isn't living the life that you envisioned for them, they're living a life that's way bigger than we could have ever imagined. And so often we let what other people have to say and the way they use their words really determine our worth and what we think of ourselves and how we move in this world. And if I let these ugly comments, wherever you are, dude, that commented on my one YouTube video telling me I need to drag myself up the stairs and I can't expect the world to create accessibility. Wherever you are, fuck you. <laughs> to be quite honest and, and what you have to say. And 
when I start adapting that mindset of like, you know what, you want to be an ugly person, you want to say ugly things, you want to be this way, go fuck yourself. Straight up. And I'm really trying not to cuss as much, but that's straight up how I feel about those people. If you are spreading hate in this world, if you are being an ugly human being, go be, it's not going to affect me because you're purposely being malicious and it is a reflection of you, your character, and something that you clearly are lacking in yourself. If you feel the need to put others down, not my problem. And then also backing up, all right, so if people aren't being malicious, if they're just using words, people don't know what they don't know, which is gonna, this is bringing me back to the other thing I said. We can't blame people for not accomplishing things that they don't even know are available to them. For example, my mom was raised a certain way viewed life a certain way, saw it through a certain lens, only knows what she's experienced. Only knows what she's experienced. So how can I expect her to provide me value and experience of things she has no idea about? I can't. And how can we expect other people to show up and realize that they don't have to live in poverty. They don't have to continue the generational habits that have come before them. They don't have to live that life. They can change if they're willing to put the effort and the work in and work really freaking hard. How can we expect them to know what they don't know and what they haven't been exposed to? This is why I read books. Because I'm literally learning and absorbing from other people's experience. And I'm like, holy crap, well, if they went through X, Y, and Z, and they still made it okay on the other end, there's no reason that I can't make it through X, Y, and Z and make it okay on the other end, too. Look, I drank every day before I was injured. Literally, every day I'd get off work and then have at least two to three beers. At least. I did drugs, like drug drugs. I was completely in poverty. I would charge my debit card as a credit card at the gas pump on Monday, so that way that $1 pre-authorization charge would make it to payday Wednesday, so I had enough gas to get to and from work for the week. My life was an absolute mess. But drinking every day is what my mom does after work. She comes home and she has three, four beers. Stuffing my face with junk food. That's what my dad does every day. That's the example I had. So what else am I gonna do? If we wanna see the world change, that example starts with us. It starts with what we do. And if we are willing to take the effort and become better, be, do more, be more, put more effort into life and just being alive, we're not gonna get to where we wanna be. You don't have to continue to be who you've always been. You're allowed to redefine yourself. You're allowed to become more. You don't have to wait for Joe's permission to say, hey, you can do that now. No, you can do that now. You can live the life you wanna live. You can become who you wanna become. But it takes you making that effort every single day. It takes you changing you every single day. And if you aren't willing to do it, you're never gonna get there. We're sitting here waiting for a savior. You are your damn savior, man. You are the person that has control. You are the person that can make a difference in your life. But you have to be the one to do that. thought that because of where I came from, who I came from, I thought that determined what I was capable of. Doesn't determine shit. I thought because I became a wheelchair user, I was less than and I was incapable. That's also a lie. Our mind's meant to keep us safe and it's going to tell us these lies to keep us in a place where we aren't gonna grow because safety is, is doing the same thing, doing what you always know, not having change. Change is scary, change is uncomfortable. Change makes you feel a certain way. If you want life to become easier, you have to do things that make you uncomfortable. 
because regardless of which path you choose, one's not gonna be easier than the other. They're both very difficult. They're both gonna be hard. One's just gonna give you more of a life that you wanna live. By working hard, by putting effort in every day, you're allowing yourself to become who you wanna be. You're allowing yourself to get to where you wanna be. But you have to put the effort in every day. You have to do the work. Nobody can do the work for you. Nobody can go out and, and complete your workouts. Nobody can put, physically feed you and put food in your mouth. Like You are the one making these choices every single day. And the choices you make accumulate. Just because you're in good health right now, just because things are going well right now, does not mean that's the way it's gonna be forever. Especially if you are not doing things to continue to maintain that health, to continue to keep you in the place where you are now. Because if you're not even doing the things to maintain, then you're still going backwards because the world's keep evolving, keeps moving while you stay stagnant. frustrating it's very frustrating because I work harder as a disabled person than I ever did when I was not disabled I put more effort into my future becoming who I want to become creating the life of my dreams as a disabled person than I ever did when I was walking and <laughs> my biggest regret not living life sooner is wasting the mobility that I have the opportunity that I had 